Namaste. Welcome to class. For today's class, we're going to focus on poses that will help heal any aches and pains that you experience whenever you're on your period, any cramps, um, and it's a good way to just help the body and the mind relax and slow down a little bit. However, if you're not on your period, this is still going to be a good way to stretch the body, especially around the hips, around the back, and the legs. So either way, it'll be a restorative experience for everyone. So you won't be needing much, although it might be nice to have pillows or a yoga, or a yoga block or yoga blocks to support you in class, just so you have a very nice, comfortable experience. And other than that, you won't need anything else, so come to your mat now, find your child's pose. We will be holding this pose for more than a minute, so make sure that you get really comfortable here. You can bring your knees as wide as you want them to be, hips resting on your heels with the feet together. Try to crawl your arms forward and allow the elbows to rest on the floor. If you have blocks or pillows, you can now stack your pillows underneath your belly, chest, and head, and then use that to rest your torso on. Otherwise, just keep your forehead on the ground. Can you relax around your neck, around the forehead, especially the jaw? Allow the shoulders to pull away from your ears. You can keep your arms straight, but you can also bend your elbows and just keep the arms very soft. And then keep your hips heavy on the heels. Feel the stretch on the tops of the feet and ankles. And then take a breath in. And sigh it all out. <sighs> Again, inhale. And sigh it all out. <sighs> One more time. Take a big breath in. And let it all go. <sighs> Settle down here now on your mat. Allow the breath to slow down as well, breathing in through your nose and then breathing out through your nose. Take your time here, no need to rush the breath. If you can, try counting your breath in your head. So as you inhale, maybe count up to four or five. And then as you exhale, see if you can breathe out for seven, eight, or even ten counts. So I want you to really slow the exhalations. And as you slow down your breath, let this help you soften even more. Breathing in. And breathing out. As you're in this pose, take this opportunity to honor your body for everything it does for you. Honoring your body for being healthy. Honoring your body for being able to do everything that you want to do without any problems. taking the opportunity to also thank yourself for showing up on your mat today, even when you could have chosen to do a million other things. Just a few more breaths here. Inhale and exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's take one more breath. Inhale. And exhale. From your child's pose, we're going to walk our hands back first and then allow your torso to sit upright for a moment. 
rebounding in this pose for now. And as you sit up tall here, you can keep your eyes closed and just observe how are you feeling at this moment. Slowly, we're going to move into our Sphinx pose. So begin to walk your hands forward, lower all the way down onto your belly. And then you're going to take your forearms on the mat in front of you, making sure that your elbows stack underneath the shoulders. So try not to bring your elbows too wide apart. Adjust the elbows closer together. From here, your palms are facing down and then relax your legs. So maybe separate your legs as wide as your mat pointing your feet back and just allow the legs to relax and drop to the floor. Relax around the pelvis, around your hips, and even your back. And since we're here on our bellies, we want to stretch the belly here. So feel the chest lifting up as if you're trying to pull your rib cage away from your pelvis, just finding length around the abdominal area. And then at the same time, as you allow your pelvis to be heavy, maybe you'll also feel a stretch around the hip flexors a little bit if it's very tight for you. And then just breathe into your lower back. There's not much space in the lower back right now, but I want you to breathe into your lower back as if you're trying to breathe space into it, just so you're more aware of your, your lower back. And again, just like we practiced earlier, really take your time with a breath. Breathing in very slowly through your nose. And then breathing out very slowly through the nose. Let each exhale remind you to relax. From your Sphinx Pose, slowly slide your hands back towards your chest and then push into the hands and knees, lift yourself up to a tabletop position. So once you come into tabletop, feel free to move around first, maybe moving side to side or back and forth, whatever resonates with you. Again, we want to rebound here for a little bit, so notice how your back is feeling, notice how you're feeling right after your Sphinx Pose. Taking your last two breaths, breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. From here, we're going to move into our low lunge. So slowly step your right foot forward towards the hands. And then once your foot is there in between your thumbs, slide your left knee back just a few more inches Finding the perfect stance for you, wherein you feel a stretch in your right hip and on the left thigh, but it doesn't feel like you're hurting yourself in any way. It doesn't feel like it's too much for you in any way. Just find that perfect balance where you're stretching, but you're also still stable here. Once you come into your low lunge, just keep your hands on the floor or on yoga blocks if you have them. And just allow the head to relax. You can even bring your chin down and breathe here. Press into the right heel and into your left big toe. Breathe into your hips and legs. And then very slowly, begin to move your weight back towards the left leg a little bit so it's easier to slide your right knee back again to tabletop. And then let's go to the other side. So step your left foot forward now. Take your left foot right in between the hands. Slide your right knee back. Sink your hips down towards your left heel and feel the left heel pushing into the floor as well as the right big toe. Relax your shoulders, your head down, and just keep your hands on the ground framing your left foot. 
You can also use blocks here. Relax here once again. Slow, deep breaths. Take your last breath, inhale, and exhale. Now inhale, shift your weight back a little bit to the right leg, slide your left knee back, and come back into your tabletop. Moving into your pigeon pose, so we're going to step the right foot forward again, and then move your right foot all the way to the left hand. So bring it in line with your left hand this time. Flex your right foot and slowly drop the right shin down to the mat, pulling the right heel back a little bit closer to your hips or closer to your left leg so that your knee stays safe. And then from here, we want to keep our hips, our pelvis squared to the front of your mat. So make sure that your hips are still facing forward and that your hips are not facing the left side. Now, if you're able to move your right foot forward, you can move it a little bit more to the front of your mat for as long as your hips stay centered. You're not shifting all of your weight to one side. If you are, then that means you need to bring the right heel a little closer in or slide a block underneath your right hip. But again, we want to feel comfortable here. We, want, we don't want to feel so active in the pose. So just find any comfortable pigeon variation. Inhale. And exhale. Now you can stay upright or if you want, lower down to the elbows. Maybe let the chin and the head drop. Or crawl the hands forward and then rest on the mat or on pillows or blocks. So again, many different options. Keep pressing into the left thigh and into the left big toe so your weight isn't all on your right hip. Relax your shoulders, relax the face, especially the chin and the jaw. And just stay here for a few breaths. Take one more breath, inhale, and exhale. Now very slowly push into the ground, walk your hands back, and then you're going to slowly slide the right leg all the way back. Come back to tabletop position. Feel free to shift side to side, forward and back, maybe even do a few cat and cow stretches if you'd like. And then when you're ready, we're going to go to the other side. So step your left foot forward now to the left hand. And then move your left foot all the way to the right side. Flex your left foot first before you drop the shin down. And then if you need to, move the left heel closer so it's easier to square your hips. But if there's still room for you, you can also slide your left foot further away from you until the shin is parallel to the front of your mat for as long as the weight is still balanced on both sides. Now, wherever you are, press into the right thigh and into the right big toe. Keep flexing your left foot all throughout. Lift your chest up. And then on your next exhale, you can either stay here or walk your hands forward, come down to the forearms, maybe drop your head. And final option, extend your arms and lower all the way down, whether it's on the mat or on support, like your pillows or blocks. Relax your shoulders. Keep the weight around the pelvis and not on your head or arms. So really shift your weight back. Consciously do that all throughout the whole pose. And then take a breath in. And a breath out. Stay here in your pigeon pose. Take your last breath here, inhale, and exhale. Slowly walk your hands back, lift your torso up, 
and then slide your left leg all the way back to tabletop. From here, we're going to swing our legs forward and then sit down on your mat. Extend your legs in front. Stay here for a few moments first, just keeping the legs straight. Observe how the body feels so far after everything we've done on the mat. And then when you're ready, we're going to keep your right leg straight, bend your left knee into the chest, and then drop your left knee out to the side with a foot to the inner right thigh. From here, make sure the hips, the shoulders, and chest are all facing the right leg. And then inhale, lift your chest up. As you exhale, crawl your hands forward and fold just as far as your body will let you. Now, you can keep your right foot relaxed here this time. There's no need to flex your right foot for today. And then you can allow your head to just hang here. Shoulders relax, kind of rounding your back, allowing that to happen in this version of your Janu Sursasana. Or if you want, again, you have blocks, you have pillows, you can stack those on top of the right leg. That way you can rest your forehead on something. Take your time to set this pose up so that you have a really good experience. And then when you're ready, just take a breath in and then a breath out and sink deeper into the pose. Relaxing your hips. Relaxing your left leg here, allowing the left knee to drop towards the floor. You can even slide a pillow or a block underneath your left knee if you feel that the left knee is very high up and it's hard for the hip and thighs to relax. And maybe for some of you, your head is not very close to the right leg. That's okay too. There is no need to bring the head all the way down. I just want you to feel like you're rounding your torso here and just falling forward towards the leg. And if you can find that deep stretch on the back of your right leg all the way up to the back of the neck, then that's good enough for today. Take your last breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, slowly walk your hands back, rolling your spine all the way up, and then extend your left leg forward. Take a moment here first. Other side, you're going to keep the left leg straight. This time, bend your right knee. Drop your right knee out to the side and then foot to your inner thigh. Turn your hips to face the left leg. Make sure your torso is facing the left leg as well. No need to flex your left foot this time. Inhale, just lift your chest up, lengthen. And then exhale, crawl your hands forward and fold over your left leg. Setting up this pose, maybe you want to use props again underneath the head or underneath the right knee, your choice. Allow your upper body to be heavy here, falling forward, chin towards the chest. Shoulders drop away from your ears and just let go here. Embrace the stillness and the silence as you're in this pose. And observe what the body goes through the longer you're here.
Taking one more breath, inhale. And exhale. Now slowly walk your hands back, lift your torso up. And then you're going to bring the soles of the feet together so both legs will now bend. Knees drop out to the side. For this Baddha Konasana or your bound angle pose, slide your feet further away from your groin. So you want there to be ample space between the heels and the hips. It doesn't have to be so far from one another, just enough so that you have a bit of a wider diamond here. If you look down, it should look like a diamond shape. And then just keep your hands on your ankles, lengthen your spine. Take note, it's perfectly fine to stay in this variation. You can just stay upright. If you find that it's very hard to bring the knees down to the mat and you're rounding your lower back a lot, then slide pillows or a block underneath your pelvis, underneath your hips, so that you elevate your hips and it's easier to let the knees fall towards the floor. Now, if you're not going to do that, again, you can use your props in a different way. So from here, inhale. If you want to fold forward, as you exhale, bring your chin towards the chest and then round your spine, curling it all the way down until you're close to the feet. And then from there, you can stack pillows and blocks so that your head can rest on something once again. Let your upper body be very heavy. Imagine a rag doll. It's the same thing here. Allow your upper body to just fall over your lower body. And then as you're here, imagine your lower body um, is growing roots into the mat, into the earth, so that you feel more grounded and your weight is right around the pelvis. And then let everything else just kind of relax into this moment. Take your last three breaths, inhale, and exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Very slowly, you're going to walk your hands back, lifting yourself all the way up to sit up tall again, especially if you folded forward. And then carry your knees, bring your knees back up to center, move forward so you have ample space behind you. And then with your arms extended forward, very slowly roll your spine all the way down to lie down on your mat. Take a moment here first on your back. And when you're ready, you're going to hug your knees into the chest. It may feel good to keep your knees apart so it's almost like a cradle pose for those who are familiar with your cradle pose where you interlock your fingers but your knees move to the elbows to the inner elbows that way your knees are apart thighs are apart and then you just allow your forearms to press your shins down so that you feel a stretch on your back on your thighs and hips and then keep your head down and your shoulders down if that doesn't feel right for you, just hold on to the knees. Hug your knees into the chest. You can rock side to side. Close your eyes maybe. And take your last three breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly release your left leg down so the right knee stays hugged in. And then you're going to grab the outer blade of your right foot. Make sure that your right elbow stays towards the inner knee. So you want your right elbow to be in between your legs, not outside of the knee. While the right forearm kind of crosses over in front of the shin so that you can grab onto the outer edge or the pinky edge of your right foot. Pull your right knee down towards the rib cage so the knee should be further out of your torso. It shouldn't be on top of your torso. And then allow that to help open up your right hip and thigh a lot more. 
You want to also keep your right foot stacked above your right knee. So try to lift that foot up so that your right foot is stacked above the knee. And it's almost like a squat, but in a different perspective. So if that visual helps you, you can find that. Keep your right shoulder relaxed. You can even use your other hand to support your right leg so that you can stretch the right hip even more. And just stay here and breathe for now. Relax the neck, the face, the shoulders. Very slowly. We're going to take that right leg and then slowly extend the leg all the way up to the ceiling. Your hands go behind the right thigh. Now, you don't have to force your right leg to be straight. I want you to relax your right foot and ankle. The knee can even be bent. Just focus on the stretch you're getting behind the right thigh for now. For those who have a little bit more mobility in the hamstrings, you can slide your hands up higher, maybe towards a calf muscle. Everyone at home, make sure you're not holding on to the back of the knee or else that'll force you to bend the knee. As much as possible, we don't want to bend the knee here. We want to keep it as straight as we can make it. But it's also okay that it's not completely straight. So just find that perfect in between. With each inhale, think about straightening out the leg just a little bit. And with each exhale, pulling the right leg in closer and closer to you without letting the left leg move towards you either. You want to keep that left leg on the ground. Inhale here. And exhale. You can flex your right foot here, but if you prefer to point your foot, that also works. So again, it's up to you. What, your, what does your body need today? I personally like to go back and forth, flexing and then pointing, especially if my shins kind of need a stretch. So maybe you'd like that too. Inhale here, and exhale. Alright, very slowly bend your right knee into the chest first. Take a moment there. And then release your right leg all the way down. Again, stay here for a few moments as well in your Shavasana, just observing how the right side feels compared to the left. Moving on to the other side, you're going to take your left knee into the chest, finding your half happy baby pose first. So grab the left foot with your hand with your left hand and make sure the elbow is towards the inner knee left forearm crosses over the shin and then your left hand grabs the pinky edge of your left foot pull that left foot up towards the ceiling so that the sole of the foot is facing up but then pull the knee down so that you stretch the left hip and thigh as you do this, keep your neck relaxed, shoulders still down towards the floor. The right leg, keep it anchored down onto your mat so it doesn't lift off the ground. And then relax everything else here. Take a breath in and a breath out. Stay here and relax. Taking your last breath, inhale and exhale. Moving on to your hamstring stretch, extend your left leg up to the sky. Hold on to the back of the left thigh. Either flex or point your foot or keep it as is. You can keep it relaxed. And then with each inhalation, you can extend the left leg just a little bit more. 
And then with each exhalation, try to pull the leg in closer to you to stretch it deeper. You can also keep your hands to the left calf muscle. You can keep your left foot flexed here and feel a deeper pull on the back of your left leg. Whichever variation you're doing, every time you breathe in, lengthen the leg. And every time you breathe out, pull the left leg in closer. It could be very subtle. Maybe it barely moves. That's still okay here. Focus on the sensation on that left leg. Take your last two breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Breathe in. And breathe out. We're going to end with a very easy twist here. So as you're still lying down on your back, extend your arms out wide with the palms facing up. Take a breath in, keeping the knees and thighs together. As you exhale, drop both legs to the right side, letting them fall all the way to the ground. Turn your head to the left, and if you want, you can rest your right hand over the legs just to press a little bit more weight into your legs. Relax your belly, your chest, and breathe here. Take your last breath, inhale, and exhale. Begin to bring your knees back up to center. And then carefully go to the other side. You're going to drop your legs to the left side now. Same thing, keep your feet, legs together. Turn your head to the right. And maybe the left arm can rest over the legs just to add a bit of weight. Relax your body down into the ground. Close your eyes and breathe. Stay here. Take one more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly, you're going to bring your legs back to center. And to end our practice, we're going to stay in a reclined bound angle pose. So very similar to what we did earlier. Bring the soles of the feet together. Drop your knees out to the side, away from one another. Slide your feet forward so you're in a wider butterfly stance. And then take your arms anywhere you prefer. It can be down by your side with the palms facing up. Maybe one hand on your belly, another on your heart. Maybe both hands on the lower belly. That might feel very soothing for you ladies. Or arms overhead to stretch the arms. Close your eyes. Take a big breath in. And sigh it all out. <sighs> One last time. Inhale. And let it go. <sighs> You can stay here for as long as you want. I suggest just stay here even when the video ends. And just notice and observe how the body responds as you're in this pose. And if you find that your body is ready to leave, then you're going to slowly lift yourself up into a seated position and close your practice. Thank you so much for joining me in this class today. I hope that you feel relaxed and you feel really taken care of, especially if you're on your period. I hope you feel a little better. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next one.